This is the Hagman and the Hagman Report for today. It is Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. I'm Doug Hagman. With me in studio is my co-host, my son, fellow investigator Joe Hagman. Together we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Folks, you're about to hear Reverend Michelle Hopkins. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Uh, Reverend Michelle. Yes. Uh, welcome to the show, Reverend Michelle. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. What do you know about ISON and... and if this is related, how how so? Okay, let me tell you what I know about ISON. First of all, it's going to be going past Mars with its debris field. And before it even came in uh, to where Mars is, it passed through our solar system's asteroid belt. When it did that, it careened into asteroids that went helter-skelter all over the universe. Some of them went forward in its path toward the world, toward the Earth. Some of them have already hit the Earth. They've already gone down through our atmosphere and burned up and whatnot. Some of them have hit terra firma. We just had a really spectacular view of one that came through our atmosphere and lit up nearly a third of the atmosphere. It was really, really spectacular from space. Um, So we've got that debris coming at us already from the asteroid belt. And this thing that just went through our our, our uh, atmosphere, it was an asteroid. It was not a meteor. We people think that a meteorite is just you know a smaller asteroid. But no, they're different animals. Uh, an asteroid is has a different makeup, and it was a small asteroid. Well, it passes with its debris field in Mars in early November, right around November tenth, and it leaves debris all the way through our solar system, um, which, you know, on its entire path, which early next year the Earth is going to be traveling through. But before that happens, Ison will be traveling uh, past our sun. It's going to kind of ricochet around the sun. It passes several of our planets, and it will probably be throwing asteroids and other debris down on these planets as it goes by. It comes to Earth, uh, it, its debris field starts passing by Earth, and Earth starts going into, revolving, actually revolving inside Ison's debris field on December 1st of this year. It begins to pass through the debris field. Now, during this time, the entire Earth is going to be affected. Now, we... Remember that the tail has picked up all these significant asteroids and debris and dust traveling through that asteroid belt. On December 8th, Ison itself passes by. Now, we should be able to really see a spectacular show from the comet. The comet is really huge, and, and it's even its tail. On, six, on the 16th of December, Ison will be fully past the Earth, but... For 15 days, 15 days, our Earth is going to be revolving in that debris trail for this huge comet. Wow. This this debris field has asteroids and large debris, meteors, meteorites, dust, and all kinds of other debris that are going to be pelting the Earth. And there is one scripture that uh, this reminds me of. It reminds me of the first trumpet. In Revelation 8, it talks about the trumpets, okay? And uh, before the first trumpet sounds, it says, the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Now, Ison is pretty large. It could cause seismic activity. Definitely flashes of lightning as these things come down through our atmosphere. Rumblings and uh, thunder, possibly, from those flashes of lightning. But the first trumpet says, the angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. And it hurled down was hurled down on the earth. And when that happens, a third of the earth is burned up, a third of the trees are burned up, and all the green grass 
was burned up. And I've never seen an event in all of history that I'm aware of that this could actually have been fulfilled in the debris field of Ison. I've seen it with my own eyes, what it looks like. This could be fulfilled. Wow. All right. Um, now, where would that put us in a timeline? You know, everyone, boy, we get a lot of emails and questions. You know, where are we in terms of the end of days? If they, where, where would that put us in the timeline if that if that did come to pass in that fashion? Okay, I believe we are standing on the precipice of the seven year tribulation, and yes, I believe it is seven years. I believe it begins with an agreement between Israel, the Antichrist, her enemies, and many nations. A seven year agreement. And in the middle of that seven years, the Antichrist will act deceitfully and he will go in and to Jerusalem and take Jerusalem for a time. But the earth will help Israel. Anyway, I believe we are standing right on the precipice of seeing the beginning of the tribulation happen with the stroke of that pen. At that moment, on that day, when the Antichrist is revealed, when that treaty is signed and the world knows that there is finally peace between Israel and all of her enemies and these many nations. Now, where are we as far as the seals are concerned? Um, Revelation and the end times, the scripture gives us little pieces of the puzzle. Here and there is a piece. And we fit them in together where they fit in best. And there are keys to each and every one of these scriptures that help us to place it where it goes in that timeline. The seals are consecutive in and of themselves. They happen from one to seven consecutively, just as they're written. The trumpets happen consecutively in and of themselves. The bowls of wrath happen consecutively in and of themselves, but they fit together. Where these keys are, they tell us how they fit together. Where are we in the seals? Have some of the seals been opened? I believe they have. The first seal says a white horse. Its rider held a bow. He was given a crown. And he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. This, I believe, is the spirit of Antichrist, which we are told was even alive and well, working during the time that Paul was walking on the earth. Um, And we've seen many leaders who wanted to conquer the world to bring it together in a one-world government. Leaders of Rome did that. Egypt did that. Alexander did that. Um, Napoleon did that. Uh, um, The man who was the leader of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, he believed he was Nebuchadnezzar reincarnate. He believed he was the Antichrist. And... He tried to do the same thing. He was getting ready to do that too. And interestingly, our president seems to be bent on conquest because we had everything to do with Arab Spring in every Muslim country. This kind of deal was brokered and chaos was provoked, I believe, by America, by our forces. Now, that's just my humble opinion. Hmm. But we, he is. That's interesting, by the way. Uh, he is, well, go ahead, I'm sorry. That's okay. He, I believe he is one of these people who works in the spirit of Antichrist and has this bow, this huge power, this great crown, and is a conqueror bent on conquest. Bent on conquest. He's, then the second seal, another horse came out, a fiery red one. The rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him is given a large sword. This, I believe, is a spirit of hatred. It causes men to hate and kill each other indiscriminately. And if we look again in Muslim countries, this could be Islam. All right? People in Islam are bent on killing each other and killing everyone else in the world. If you don't believe as I believe, you're dead. You deserve to die, and I will have glory because I kill you. 
It's my duty to kill you. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Uh, so this could be Islam, but it is definitely the spirit of hatred that is going throughout the earth. And it's not just in Islam. The love of most, as we were told in the end, is waxing cold. Okay? I, yep, People's I agree with love that. is becoming cold. And there's another uh, added uh, thing to that in these chemtrails the fun vax that is supposed to uh, deactivate the God gene in people's brains so that they no longer venerate God it has been poured down on us for years now. The love of most is waxing cold, but the truth is our veneration of God, if you are a true believer, is not uh, based on emotions. It's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. The third seal. So, okay, I believe we're in the second seal. The second seal has also been opened. The third seal. Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages. Six pounds of barley for a day's wages. And do not damage the oil and the wine. And I believe that oil is not the oil that uh, is uh, necessarily olive oil. Okay? I believe this is oil from the ground. It just says oil, but this is about economy the economy being destroyed so much so that it takes a whole day's wages just to buy a loaf of bread. Now, oil, our economy is based on the petrodollar, which is why we're going against Syria, because Assad refused to work within the petrodollar anymore. So that's why chaos in Syria. We're trying to overthrow him in such a way that we can put in a puppet government who will acknowledge the petrodollar and it will save our economy for as long as the powers that be deem it necessary to do so until it's time to bring our economy down with the rest of the world's economy. Is this seal open now? As far as the rest of the world is concerned, a lot of people in this world will say yes because we're experiencing that. But in America, it hasn't yet come to America. So Americans don't see it as being open. But I believe this has been opened just because I see what's going on in the rest of the world. This is happening in the rest of the world. And the cries not to damage the oil, because that's what our economy is based on, are going out. No, 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 Reverend Hopkins, I agree with you on that. My sources from the intelligence venue suggest the end goal, objective here, is to kill the U.S. dollar as the yes. world's reserve currency. We're raising the price of petrol artificially now to keep us above the water for just a little while longer until we completely bottom it out. And this is right. all controlled. This is all contrived by the powers that be to bring in the new world order. Exactly. Okay. Yet yeah, yet yeah, we're now we're back on the same page. I I think we're it's two different angles looking at the same picture, um, coming to the same right. conclusion. Okay, beautiful. Right. Okay, go ahead and continue. Now, the fourth seal, okay? The dappled horse with death and Hades following close behind him. They were given a power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and by the wild beasts. Has that been opened yet or not? Well, plague and famine certainly are about. And millions of people, particularly in places like Africa, are dying because of plague and famine. Um, has this been opened? I don't know. I can't firmly say that I believe it's been opened because of the force of the earth happening, but I can see elements of it taking place now. So it's possible the fourth seal is open. So we're waiting for the fifth seal to be opened. And the fifth seal is where the martyred souls are told, wait a little longer, you know, because what's happening is your brothers and sisters are going to be killed just as you have been during the Great Tribulation. That's what we're waiting on. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Thank you for watching, and God bless you.